you to what we're doing here. So good evening. I'm so glad that you guys are all here. It's going to be an incredible weekend. You should all have a program. If you don't, they're handing them out at the door. Um, that's going to give you information on each of our speakers um, about what we do and uh, follow up and contact information for everyone. So make sure you get a program. Um, I'll be making announcements and giving some more information as we go through the weekend. Um, if you have any questions about anything, our booth, Wisconsin Christian News, is just outside the door here. And uh, feel free to stop by. Uh, pick up a free newspaper if you haven't gotten one, and we have other resources too. So, For those who don't know, my name is Rob Pugh. I'm the publisher of Wisconsin Christian News. Uh, some of you may know me from my radio program. Uh, it's broadcast nationally twice a week on the VCY America Radio Network. I also write for barbwire.com, Capitol Hill Outsider, Sons of Liberty, News with Views, and a publication called News and Blues, which is based out of Canada. <laughs> so we're international, we got Canada now. So. Um, I also head up the Wisconsin Christian News Ministry Center, which is downtown Marshfield. We're also a regional headquarters for the Salt and Light Brigade. Um, before we get started, Alrighty, so welcome to Courageous Christianity. I can't tell you what an honor it is for me to have each one of these speakers here. They're incredible speakers with um, a heart for God and a heart for service. They're the real deal. Every single one of them has been an inspiration and has sown seeds of tremendous spiritual growth into my life. And I encourage you not to miss a single one of their presentations this weekend. But Courageous Christianity, people have asked me exactly what is that? Well, let me tell you. I've gone to church my whole life, and about 25 years ago, the Holy Spirit started bothering me about something. I came to realize that most of us simply do church. Week after week, we sing songs, listen to a sermon, and then we go home and we do it all over again next week. We send our kids off to children's church to watch Veggie Tales and color a picture. And for a lot of us, that's the extent of our Christian faith. So you see, we're never actually asked to do anything other than help in the nursery or be a part of the worship team or pass the collection plate and things like that, greet people at the door. But when this revelation came to me all those years ago, it was like we were just sitting there listening to sermons each week, always learning, never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. But there was never any call to action. We sat inside the far walls of our church buildings and never even attempted to impact the world around us. World spiraling out of control into sin, debauchery, and degradation. In fact, we were encouraged not to get involved in cultural or social issues, and these things are never preached from the pulpit. Things that I consider to be of vital importance to all of us are off-limits. They're taboo subjects that we're never allowed to even speak about. Instead of being discipled and trained up to be Christian leaders and disciple makers, it was like we were all in school. But it became obvious to me that we're never going to graduate into the real world, no matter how long we stay. This frustrated me because no one, because in, in one of his most important teaching times, Jesus taught his disciples. <laughs> Will you answer this for me? It's uh, Bill Fetter. <laughs> so I was frustrated because in one of Jesus' most important teaching times, he taught his disciples, now, wait a minute. and these were truly Christ followers in every sense of the word. He taught that you are the salt of the earth, but if salt should lose his savor, how can it be made salty again? It is henceforth good for nothing, but be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Some translations will say, if the salt should lose its savor. But in the original text, Jesus actually said, his savor, 
Which tells me the Lord wasn't talking about table salt here. He was talking about people. We're to be the salt of the earth. We're to have a serious countercultural impact on the wicked world around us. But we don't. All we really do is sit when we're told to sit, stand when we're told to stand, and sing when we're told to sing. And when we attempt to use our spiritual gifts to actually impact the world around us, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, our pastors actually discourage us from doing that. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not here to bash pastors. I love pastors. I know a lot of them personally. I've worked with a lot of them. But I can tell you, if you stick with us this weekend, you're going to hear some serious teaching on the most vital things that all true followers of Christ desperately need to hear. And you're going to hear topics that most pastors won't touch with a 10-foot pole if their lives depended on it. Because they fear offending some who may be sitting in the audience. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. I get calls every week from all around the country, and it's the same nationwide, church after church. Friends, we don't have time for that anymore. You look around and wonder why our culture is disintegrating, why our world is in turmoil, why many of our kids are so confused they can't even say for sure which gender they are. I'll tell you why. Because the salt has lost a savor. Christianity has become irrelevant, good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled on under the foot of men. Because we've taken the word of God and turned it into nothing more than a social activity. We're talking about the world-changing, life-changing, soul-saving power of God that the original church was. And look what we've done to it. All in the name of political correctness. Even today, many churchgoers will say they're willing to lay down their lives for the cause of Christ. But I wonder how true that actually is. So let's see. Are you willing? To speak out for the Lord and His truths, even if it might offend somebody, make them feel uncomfortable? Or are you going to just love everyone and judge not? Doing that will accomplish something. You'll love them straight to hell. And their blood will be on your hands. Because you refuse to speak the truth of thus saith the Lord when you have the chance. The Lord said in Ezekiel 3, If you say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and give him, if I say to the wicked, you should surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Why is that? Because you refuse to speak God's word. You chose instead to love people to Jesus. Friends, Jesus was the most countercultural individual to ever walk the face of the earth. Yes, he loved people, but he loved them enough to tell them the truth. He wasn't afraid to judge, and he wasn't afraid to offend. Because their eternal souls were at stake. We have to speak the whole counsel of God. And the world we live in today needs to hear God's warning call now more than it ever has before. Speaking the truth, no matter the cost, that is courageous Christianity. Over the past few years, I've come to learn that there's a whole world of real, true Christianity out there that bears little resemblance to the vain worship and rituals that take place in most of American churches today. Now, every speaker at this conference is the epitome of courageous. Most have spent time in jail for their faith, and they've suffered greatly. They're the real deal, folks. They're not just fooling around, and they're not just playing social club church. They have given all, just as Christ's disciples did, just as the early church did. Sadly, today, many professing Christians refuse to speak the truth, even when lies are being propagated right in front of their eyes. But the Lord will separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares. Many will say to him one day, Lord, Lord, didn't we go to church every Sunday? That's not going to cut it. You know what his answer is going to be, if that's all you ever did, is go to church. 
The Lord asked in Psalm 94, Who will rise up for me against the evil evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? These men of God who are here to speak to you this weekend answer this question in the words of Isaiah 6. Here I am, Lord, send me. And they go. But today we're taught to keep our mouths shut. We're taught to be spectator Christians. Rather than turning the world upside down and being that salt and light I mentioned earlier, God's word says otherwise. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. And then back in Isaiah, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless. Friends, we don't have to be fearful or afraid. I have personally had the great honor of working alongside several of these men who will be speaking to you this weekend, ministering alongside them on the streets in various cities across the country this past year. And yes, the thought of going out and doing street ministry can be scary if all you've ever done is sat and listened to sermons. But I'm telling you, the minute you step out and be obedient to the Lord's call, to what we know God requires of His people, the minute you step out and do it, all that fear vanishes. All we have to do is obey. All we have to do is step out. Deuteronomy 31. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Don't be, do not fear or be dismayed. So, you know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. If we're truly saved Christ followers, we have the very power of the living God living inside us, and there's nothing we need to fear. We just need to be courageous. But we don't get that courage until we obey and take that first step. Revelation reminds us, And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and loving not their own lives, even unto death. The guys that you're going to hear from this weekend, they love not their own lives, even unto death. We're all going to die someday. What, what are we going to have for, to show for it? I tell you the truth now, Jesus cannot be your Savior if He is not first your Lord. So let me just end with this. I'm very thankful to God that you all have made it here. That you all came in this weekend to get this information to be a part of this conference. But if all you do is listen to the messages and get fired up like a holy pep rally, and then never put what you've learned into action, we have failed. It's a total failure. I don't want it to be that. I put a lot of work into this. I, I want you to put this into action. This is going to be the most powerful conference. These speakers are the most powerful speakers you're ever going to come across. I encourage you, don't miss a single one of these presentations. This isn't just a time of learning. It's not just a conference. It's not just a pep rally. So when you leave here, it's my prayer that you'll be doers of the word and not just hearers only.